the story of the peacemaker and the tree of peace as we know it today originated in the time of terrible conflict. It was a time when people forgot to be thankful and a time when almost all of the people had strayed from the creator. This is a dark period and perhaps one of the most violent times in history. Once again, discontentment settled in our people and bloody wars took place all over every village. A vicious cycle of war and revenge was running out of control among the five nations. It was amidst all the chaos that the creator sent a messenger of peace to be born amongst his people. The traditional people considered his actual name to be sacred and therefore never used it. He was called the peacemaker. His mission was to restore love, peace and harmony back to the people. To do this, he proposed a set of laws which the people and nations could live in peace and unity. It was a system of self-rule and was guided by moral principles called the Great Law of Peace. The peacemaker was born a Huron to a young virgin woman who had not yet gone through her rites. The young woman had not yet reached her time for the ceremony when she became pregnant. Her mother was worried of what the people in the village would say, so she hid her away during her pregnancy until she gave birth. She convinced her daughter that they had to get rid of the baby. The grandmother tried three times to kill the baby and failed each time. She then realized that he must be someone special and with special powers and knew that they should raise him very carefully. As he got older, it was realized that he had great powers of persuasion and a very good mind. When he reached manhood, it was time for him to leave on his mission to restore peace and unity to the warring villages to the east. He built a canoe of white stone and set out on his journey to establish a great peace. All of the people in the village gathered to see him off and were amazed at the sight, for they had never seen a stone float before. They noticed how swift the canoe was moving as it disappeared in the distance. We are told that the event took place in the northern shores of Lake Ontario. The first person to accept and embrace the words of the Great Peace was a woman by the name of Jikun Sase. Her place was a neutral zone for anyone passing through, even war parties, who would leave all their weapons outside of her dwelling. She fed them and offered them a resting place. As she spoke his words, she broke down in tears for she had never heard anything so beautiful and said she'd follow it for the rest of her days. Because she accepted and embraced the words of the peace, the peacemaker told her that at the successful formation of the great law of peace and for all time, she would be the symbol of the leadership of the women, which is the clan mothers. In this way, she would never be forgotten. Peacemaker visited the Mohawks first. There, he was to confront the most evil of them. He had to change their minds and behaviors to accept the great peace. He was often tested and had to prove himself. Because of the people were such a fierce and warring nation, the peacemaker worked very long and hard to convince them to accept the great law of peace. With his powers of persuasion, he eventually won them over. He then left for the other nations of the Iroquois, the Seneca, Onadas, Cayugas, and Onondaga. The peacemaker met two special people who were instrumental in the establishment of great peace. One was Ayanwata, whose family had been killed by the evil and powerful sorcerer. Tadora, he was the other man. The peacemaker used the first condolence ceremony on Ayanwata to remove his grief using wampum shells. This event was the first time that wampum was used. Wampum is used to remember words, ceremonies, and agreements and was not ever money. However, wampum was used as an exchange tool. The peacemaker asked Ayun Watha to be a spokesperson and together they traveled to spread the message of peace throughout the land. Next, his travels brought him to the Anandaga Nation, where he met with a lot of resistance from the evil Tadora. Tadora was an evil man and described as having snakes in his head and a crooked body. This symbolized a very evil person and because of his evil deeds, it reflected on him. Tadadora would not give in many attempts by the peacemaker to give him to accept the peace. The peacemaker and Ayanwatha moved on to the other nations and were successful in convincing them to accept peace. He then gathered the 49 men whom he had convinced to accept peace to converge back to the center 
and they all worked together on the evil mind of Todadorho of the Onondaga Nation. They tried many times in many ways to convince him that peace was the only way, and many times they failed. Finally, they got the 49 men together and they sang the great song of peace, the Haya Haya. The song kept in focus with one of the purposes of winning over the evil mind of Todadorho. Once his mind was pacified, his body straightened and the snakes were combed from his hair. The peacemaker offered him a special position in the confederacy, that position which was to watch over the fire on behalf of the five nations. The offer appealed to him and he accepted. He agreed to live in peace and tend to the fire and make sure that it would burn forever. After successfully winning over one of the most evil, the peacemaker then looked over upon the men and saw that they still carried their weapons. He then said that they need a symbol that would remind them of the promise made to each other, of the promise of peace. As he looked around, he saw a very tall tree. He thought that because the tree was so tall, it could be seen from distant places, and because the top of the tree pierced the sky, attention would always be drawn to it. On the branches of the very tall tree, the needles are in a cluster of five. He used this as a symbol of the nations being bound together as one. He took some needles off of the branch and told them that even with the change of the seasons, the tree stays green for all time. So shall the great peace stay among the five nations for all time. He then uprooted the tree and it created a cavity. He instructed the men to cast down their weapons of war into the cavity, then buried their greed, hatred, and jealousy. The tree was then replaced and the peacemaker then said, into the depths of the earth, down into the deep under earth currents of water flowing into the unknown regions we cast all weapons of strife we bury them from the site and plant again a tree thus shall a great peace be established and hostility shall no longer be known between the five nations but only peace to a united people the roots spread out from the tree and are called the great white roots of peace and they are spread into the four directions one to the north one to the south one to the east and one to the west. On top of the great tree was placed an eagle. The meaning of the planting of the tree symbolizes the Kanaroa Koa, the great peace and strength. The eagle symbolizes keeping a watchful eye on the roots and if any evil or danger approaches, he will scream loudly, sounding the alarm and all the nations of the Confederacy will at once come to the defense and rescue. This symbolizes that everyone has the responsibility to protect this peace. The peacemaker then took an arrow from each of the five nations and bound them together. By each nation contributing an arrow, it symbolized the combining of individual powers into one great power. The union had been now complete. A union which no one can bend or break. The peacemaker then said, We have now completed our powers so that we, the five nations confederacy, shall in the future have one body, one mind, and one heart. If any evil should befall us in the future, we stand or fall united as one man. And this is the story of the peacemaker and the tree of peace. Thank you for listening.